Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we are looking at the Maya, uh, the Japanese Tier 8 heavy cruiser. Not the Mogami, which is the Japanese Tier 8 light cruiser. But uh, this one is a Takao class cruiser and I'm trying to remember where she was... Was that in the last shipyard? I think she was in the last shipyard role. But um, not sure if she's still there, but... Uh, she was requested a fair bit <laughs> by certain people in the comments, you know who you are, <laughs> and also in uh, in Discord quite a bit. So, uh, the Maya. What's um, what's special about this one? Well, she was, like I said, a Takao-class cruiser, heavy cruiser, but unlike the Takao, she actually has only four gun turrets. So, this is one of the later refits of the Takao-class. They set out with five twin 200mm uh, gun turrets and almost no anti-air. <laughs> they had like two 240mm uh, two guns and that was it. But uh, during the war they were continuously upgraded and eventually one of the turrets was removed and replaced with some more AA. So the Maya is technically a very uh, AA heavy Takao with uh, one gun missing. She was quite busy during the Pacific campaign, and uh, she had uh, she had several engagements where she was bombarding the Henderson airfield in Guadalcanal. Now, Guadalcanal is extremely important during the Pacific War effort because initially the USA were focusing most of their effort onto Europe. So it was Germany first. Uh, they were having troops in North Africa. They were planning uh, operations in Europe. Uh, they were dealing with things in the Atlantic. And the Pacific was a little bit of a sort of afterthought, but after some successful naval battles in, in Midway especially, uh, they eventually landed and invaded uh, Guadalcanal, which was a Japanese outpost, which kind of caught the Japanese a little bit off guard, as they were not expecting that, and led to a very, very long and protracted engagement within which well, the Japanese and the Americans were battling for... Um, well, for, for that foothold that they had in the island chain, which was part of the Japanese outer defense layer. And uh, at some point, they only had one carrier there. And the Henderson airfield that they captured from the Japanese and then renamed was extremely important for air cover because the Japanese were sending troop reinforcements. And due to the fact that they couldn't take out the Henderson airfield and there was constant air cover, they had to do that with destroyers. That's the infamous Tokyo Express. So they tried to blow that airfield up and neutralize it uh, such that the troops that the Japanese were having on, on the island could, uh, could move forward, uh, could be reinforced and could move forward and uh, dislodge the Americans from this place. And uh, the Maya was part of uh, several attempts to actually, well, drop shells onto it in order to destroy it sufficiently such that it was coming out of action. But the Americans were holding on and eventually uh, beat the Japanese in Guadalcanal. And that was the turning point which changed them from a defensive stance to an offensive strategy. And uh, that momentum then, after that, they didn't let go anymore. So uh, it became kind of a really important point for both opponents in this, at this time. The Japanese had to get it back and uh, the, the Americans had to hold on. So that was the thing that turned everything into the Pacific. The other thing that I found about the Maya, which I found was really cute, is that at some point in during her service, she picked up a monkey. Uh, yes, <laughs> a real one, uh, as a mascot. And apparently the, uh, the, say, uh, the, the air crews that were stationed on the Maya in catapult planes at some point were training the monkey to salute to officers, which... <laughs> which pissed the officers off a lot. But it sounds like the, the absolute right thing to do when you have a monkey on board. And uh, even though the actual Maya eventually, I think, got torpedoed by an, uh, by an American submarine and sunk, uh, she, well, the monkey was able to disembark before that and survive. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, everybody should have a monkey, really. I think that's a great addition to things, especially if they can salute. So let's get back to the game. Uh, the Maya. Uh, obviously, yep, yeah, like I said, Takao class. Uh, heavy cruiser, not super heavily armored. So this is not a German cruiser. And um, But still, you know, not, not, not terrible with 33,000 hit points. Uh, she's reasonably fast with almost 35 knots. 
and uh, she is reasonably maneuverable with a turn time of just over seven seconds. The way I've set her up, we get to that in a second. Now the guns, here, here's where I'm a little bit on the fence. Again, this, these are the same uh, 203 millimeters you get on the taco, but you, you're missing a turret. And for me, I like playing Japanese cruisers as, uh, as long range kiters mostly, because you have a great fire chance. The HE actually does a really reasonable amount of damage. And, um, well, the reload time isn't the greatest. So, she's, yes, she can brawl, but uh, she's not very good at it most of the time. And that's where the one gun that's missing actually comes back to hurt you a little bit. Uh, she does get four quad launchers, torpedoes. Uh, these are, well, very good, uh, uh, the long lance torpedoes. So we've got a 7.8 kilometer range, we've got 4,000 damage. And uh, these are excellent torpedoes. And we got two launchers on each side, as is, as is common with Japanese cruisers, but usually the torpedo angles are not great. Now, I haven't played the Taka, so I can't actually compare that, but we'll, we'll, we'll look at that later. Anti-aircraft-wise, she is pretty capable. That's, where they, that's what you get for sacrificing that one turret. She actually has a very reasonable amount of, uh, of AA. And as far as I know, they even managed to get these 200... Uh, millimeter turrets uh, into dual purpose as well although you know <laughs> it's probably pretty hard to hit anything and the reload is pretty long so I don't know how effective that was but um, she does have a pretty reasonable AA. The surface detection uh, the base surface detection is over eight kilometers but I've got it down to 7.1 and again we'll, we'll get to the setup in a second. Now for the elite bonus you can go either with the elite gun operator which is what I've done here to get the reload just a little bit down or you can go with the cruiser modernization, which gives you a bit more hit points. And uh, I think it's like seven points additional on the large caliber AA. So it really doesn't make a difference unless you're running a dedicated AA setup and you just want to compound these things. In terms of modules, I have the main battery mod one in here. Um, I would have liked to have the precision mod because while the guns are pretty precise, they are not that precise, and occasionally you get some shells going haywire, and you only have eight of them. So it's you have, you're have missing 20% of the Takao's gun firepower, but uh, she all turns her turrets, because the, as is traditional with Japanese turrets, they don't turn very well, and if, if you're on a full turn, which you are often, if you're kiting or if you're um, if you're doing things at long range and you're out turning your guns all the time, you're not going to be very effective. So, the main battery mod one is kind of a no-brainer here. I have the steering mod in in slot two, which doesn't give us uh, the same amount of traverse acceleration as we get in in slot three. But um, there's a reason for this madness because I actually have the concealment system mod in slot three. Now, you could say, well, there's a cruiser. Why are you not going? You could go with speed or you could go with uh, steering in, in three and with propulsion in two. Yes, you could. Uh, you could even build this as an AA ship if you wanted to do something crazy. But um, I like with Japanese, uh, with these Japanese cruisers, I like to get into positions uh, and exploit these positions. And having a very good concealment allows me both to, well, get into the position I want to without necessarily being spotted immediately. And it allows me to eventually disengage if I need to, because I can just stop shooting. And after a couple of seconds, my concealment drops back to seven kilometers and uh, they can't see me anymore. <laughs> so you can get out of a tight spot that way at, at times. Um, plus, you can almost stealth torp in her, although that's not something I would usually do. But it, I like this setup because it gives me more flexibility. And she is not super maneuverable while she's quick. She's not super maneuverable and, um, and her armor won't hold up in a close range eng engagement for long. So I usually try to play this ship more as a ranged uh, sort of thing. And uh, being sneaky in a Japanese kiting heavy cruiser is kind of my, my style in these things if I can. Uh, you know, sometimes you have to brawl, but um, uh, that's how things go. Commander. Um, actually, yeah, one, one thing. She gets the defensive AA with uh, skill, which we haven't looked at. Let's have a quick look. She gets the uh, air defense alert too, which you don't get in the Takao. And she gets the same precise aiming system. You do get the defensive AA in the... I think in the Ibuki, let's have a quick look, because I'm not 100% sure. Uh, Ibuki, 
yeah, Ibuki gets the air defense alert one, uh, two, uh, two, two charges, and the Zao get the same thing with two charges. So, ye... wait, wait, Commander. Okay, so that's why I've actually run with battleship support because if you're if you're playing this as a trainer ship for captains, which she's very very qualified as um, for the for the tier nine and and tens. There you may want to have a third uh, defensive A skill if you need it. So artillery maintenance, otherwise, uh, actually air defense expert rather than victorious charge. Victorious charge would have been nice, but I do kind of like you know, to play her as her strength. It gives her, I mean, she's no Cleveland, but it gives her a bit of a capability of actually dealing with planes. If you get attacked by carriers, you can take, you can take down... A reasonable amount of planes, usually about 15 or so in a battle, that um, you know that, that might dissuade a carrier from actually uh, focusing you down. So that's a thing that um, that you can't do in attack out. If you get under air attack, you're screwed. The survivalist is here. Uh, exploit weakness is an absolute no-brainer on Japanese ships because you are HE spammers, you are torpedo spammers, and you will have something on fire most of the time. There's really very, very rarely a reason to use the AP in Japanese heavy cruisers. Uh, the marksman skill for extended precise aiming duration. And I've got the adrenaline rush on, uh, on for those late game scenarios where you are low on health and you're trying to get away and you can really do with a little bit more on a reload. But yeah, um, that's uh, that's the ship. That's also why I've got the I've got the um, Seaborn Assault Camo in here because uh, it gives us better surface detection. The historical camo uh, is is very good. I am, and it's just well, no, it's tier eight, so it starts getting a little expensive, but it is very good. Uh, main battery firing range absolutely because the range isn't that isn't the greatest on these two mil two hundred mils. Uh, torpedo range yes absolutely. Traverse speed and surface detection again so yes absolutely. Uh, also, if you've paid close attention, I'm actually running the high-grade coal instead of the preventative maintenance because, um, well, <laughs> it, it's all about stealth in this thing for me because it, does, it just does allow me to get into positions and outspot other things. I mean, not destroyers, obviously, but outspot a lot of other things and be able to position myself correctly such that I can do the thing I want to be doing. Anyway, um... Let's uh, let's go into a battle. So here we are. We are top tier. There's Amagi, Double West Virginia, and the enemy team of Wichita, Shapayev, and two destroyers. Now, when it comes to destroyers, um, she's a little. She can be a little tricky to play. I mean, you do have the torpedoes, which makes it difficult for destroyers to rush you, but you don't have the reload, and uh, you don't necessarily have the maneuverability to deal with them too well. So I generally try to not get too close to enemy destroyers and just use the H, the excellent HE at, uh, at mid-range. Now again, an attack hull, you'll have another gun, which would be great. Uh, we don't have, so we'll have, to, we'll have to make do. There's no carriers here, so I'm just going to follow the Kagero here, and uh, we'll see what we can do around A cup. Um, because we do have a, a Duca in, in the center who can defend against destroyers, so I'm not necessarily needed over there. She's not the greatest when it comes to these things. She's much more qualified in Capture kiting us. away and um, uh, dealing with uh, other cruisers or battleships. Capture area okay, uh, team calls out B and C, but uh, Kagero is pushing A, so I'm going to support him here, because otherwise I'm just going to leave him to die, pretty much, because there is going to be something most likely coming into a, uh, into C cup here. Okay. There's another destroyer in in A cup. Be how do I know that? Because I'm not um, because I am I'm not seeing him. Okay, there's the Wichita, and the Wichita is not yet in the cup. So uh, it's time for me to open up. That surprises the Wichita and the destroyer, but I've already slowed down. Okay, Wichita is firing, but he probably hasn't spotted the Kagero. So let's see if he's running into those torps. Uh, he does know that I have torps as well, though. So he's probably, if he's smart, he's probably reversing out of that. And I think the Kagero torps are pretty much missing. I may have taken one there. Okay, there's still a destroyer in, in the capture circle. We know that much. Now the Kagero's on reload, which means I'm going to distract the Wichita. Let's see if I can distract the Kagero. What are you doing? Uh, don't, don't go anywhere near that thing. Reload your, your torpedoes. I'm distracting him. The other destroyer seems to be up. There he is. He smokes up. So he's probably got torps away. That's my torps that should put the Wichita out. Um, 
And Kar yeah, Karo stays over there. I don't know if he's, he's probably proximity spotted by the Wichita, so the Wichita will know. Okay, he controls a single fire, and whatever's in that uh, smoke screen is uh, shooting. Is that a Gaja? I think there was a Gaja. Dangerous ship. Uh, okay, Kagero seems to be reloaded, so he decides to rush the Wichita. Uh, broadside on for in front of Wichita. Fortunately for him, the Wichita is firing armor piercing. Unfortunately for him, the Wichita knows how to turn a ship around. So he does take a torpedo, and that's probably a perma flood. Okay, that's two torpedoes, three torpedoes. That should be a perma flood, so I think the Wichita is dead. Okay, Gajamada, next one. And we need to turn. Is he gonna turn here or is he gonna turn over there? He's turning, he's accelerating out of the turn. Okay, Gajamada takes out the Kagero. That was to be expected. That is an excellent destroy. Now, I don't know if he's got torpedoes ready, so I'm just gonna slow down and uh, get get him to get him to disengage such that he cannot uh, he cannot easily drop torps. And he takes one of my torps that blows up his, his steering, but he's still steering, so he must have damage conned. Now we're just gonna try and Wait, is the Wichita still alive? Oh, bollocks. Okay, uh, the Gaja can disengage, and the Wichita is alive on... No, the Duca kills him. Okay, what's the situation? Um, we're, two, we're two destroyers down, Enemy and we're holding only one cup. Not good. Okay, there come the Gaja Torps. This was pretty Capture predictable, so I'm just gonna, just gonna ignore those. Uh, Gaja Mada is still here, but the Duca is coming back for us, uh, which is helpful. Okay. Where is he gone? Where is he gone? I'm still spotted. I'm not shooting. So he's within my... He, I know where he is. He's he's inside the cap circle. Because if he wasn't... Yeah, there he is. If he wasn't, I wouldn't be spotted anymore. Uh, so th that's one thing you can use the... Uh, you can use the... Um, you can use the concealment for. Okay, wait. Uh, Juka, stop. You're rushing a Gajamada. He's got torps ready, right? You, you're aware of that. Did, did the Juka have... The Juka has, has, has Hydro, right? Why are you rushing that thing? Uh, just, just Hydra him and kill him. Did he have Hydra? I can't remember. Okay, I've dropped some torps into the smoke, but I keep my distance. Yep, there he comes. Okay, I should be able to kill him if I get all my shots connected. Ah, oh, oh, damn it. <laughs> and the Duca runs into all the torpedoes, but he survives on almost no health. In a Takao, that Gaja would have been dead and that Duca would have been full health. Okay, the Duca is on almost no health. The Gneiser now looks very dead over there and we've got something coming in from the middle but we've secured a um, with an unnecessary amount of expenditure of health okay West Virginia over there uh, let's see if we can uh, drop some shots on you okay um, oh we've lost the Gneiser now I think I've overshot the West Virginia and that thing is a bit faster than I thought it was oh yeah he's seen me okay I'm gonna have to distract again because I'm full health I'll distract the West Virginia such that the Duca can kind of stay in cover because there's another battleship coming over there. Okay, let's see if we can set him on fire. I can't rush him because I can't get through that. If I get through that gap there, the other battleship's going to block me or the West Virginia is going to block me. Okay, he, con he damage cons the single fire. Okay, good. Can we set him on fire again? Okay, there's another battleship coming and the Duca is running out of, out of places to hide. Uh, plus we're still behind on points. Plus we've lost uh, C cup and okay, this doesn't. This is starting not to look not to look nice great. Shot. Okay, there we go. Perma fire on the West Virginia. What is that coming coming through there? Uh, we're still behind on points and they have two cups to our one cup. Uh, we need to one kill time. that West Virginia. Okay, Amagi, two, uh, full health Amagi, not good. Okay, can I trade? I'm gonna try. Okay, Amagi set on fire. Control single fire. So now I can rush them. Um, I'm going to give broadside to the West Virginia because he's going to... He's, he's, got, he's got less health um, and he is the the one who's, who, who's who's not got the accurate guns. If I give broadside to Amagi at this distance, he'll, he'll, he'll just murder me outright. So I'm going to try and rush the Amagi, torp the Amagi, and try to torp drop the West Virginia on the other side. I'll probably be dying doing this, but um, okay, Amagi fired, so it's time to let's go. Unfortunately, he takes out my torp tube. Fortunately, it's on the left side, so he, he can get, um, he can slow down, he can get these. Okay, um, turn around, turn around, there comes the West Virginia, yep, that hurt. Okay, uh, that should be enough. Uh, two, tor two torp spreads would have been perfect, but one torp spread out, okay. Uh, and the torpedo, I'm gonna torpedo the Amaga, yep, that, those, those were all hitting. Now he's on permaflat, plus permafire, plus the West Virginia is hopefully dead. Can I get around his back before he can reload his guns? That's the big question here. Can I get around your back uh, before you do that? Can I outrun your gun spread? Uh, no, I can't. <laughs> okay. Uh, damn it. <laughs> so, the w wait. The West Virginia survived. 
How did he survive? He took three of my torps. He should have been dead by all means and purposes. Oh, he's, you, you gotta be kidding me. He survived on what, like five health or something? Uh, okay, ten seconds. Uh, okay, the Duca kills the West Virginia, the Duca that I saved earlier. <sighs> and we win by just 30 points ahead. Oh dear, oh dear, wow. <laughs> that was a close one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, normally if I had more time, I could have just kited away from the Amagi, burned him down, and uh, waited for the West Virginia. But I had to save the Duca somehow, and, um, well, <laughs> it worked out in the end. So after all that bad luck, uh, there was a spot of good luck yeah, as well. Uh, this is not how you normally would play these things, but um, usually you'd play... The, I mean, you can. See, that's the thing with the Japanese ships, right? Uh, they, are, they all look like... Ooh, um, Long range, kiting, don't get too close sort of ships. Uh, you can also the destroyers. You can absolutely get very close and do a lot of damage in a very short amount of time if you need to. So the Maya is, do I, would I prefer over the Takao? Now again, I haven't played the Takao, but uh, on it personally, I think I would rather take um, another gun than, than the AA because uh, while she is capable, she's not capable enough to deter a carrier if he's determined to sink you. And you don't have the um, you, you don't have the uh, you don't have the maneuverability to out to dodge torpedoes easily, things like that. So I I think I'd rather have ten guns because I really enjoy the guns on these ships and the fires they can set. And, you know, like that Gajamada would have been dead if I was in a Takao, because I would have gotten more than seven shells on target. Uh, anyway, uh, not a bad ship. Uh, not a bad ship. But um, it kind of a mix between the Takao and the Ibuki in terms of AA, which you'd get in Tier 9, and the capabilities with the torpedoes and everything else that you get in Tier 8. Good, good captain trainer, though, for the line. Uh, that's for sure. Anyway, that's, just, that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody. And I'll see you next time. Bye.